let's look at the different types of corners on a racetrack. So here we are with the hairpin corner behind us. These are typically the tightest corners on the racetrack. Now they can be taken several different ways. It does depend with the entry speed that we're traveling into the corners, but also what happens on the exit of a corner. Behind us here, we have the longest straight that leads into one of the tightest corners on the racetrack. In this instance, we wanna be on the brakes quite heavily on the entry to the corner. So again, we're traveling at our maximum speed and we're gonna then be cornering at our minimum speed here. So this is where the most braking is required. Typically our hairpin corners are where the most time can be won and lost on the racetrack. So it's super important that we're hitting the right apex points and that we're not off the accelerator for too long because these are the slowest corners and that has the nature to slow our exit speeds quite dramatically. So our hairpin corners being the slowest part of the racetrack Typically, we want to get on the accelerator as early as we possibly can. Again, this is the type of corner we're going at our lowest speed. So rather than dropping down too much, if we can pick up the accelerator a little bit earlier, that limits the chance of that, our corner speeds being too low. So not all racetracks go in the one direction. You might find yourself driving the same corner but in the opposite direction on your racetrack. In this instance below, if we're driving the opposite direction, the straight over this side of us is a lot shorter on entry. And now the exit is a lot longer. It's a lot longer straight and it goes up a hill. So in this instance, we're gonna use the brakes a lot less going in this direction than what we are when we're coming down the hill and traveling at a higher speed. So although it's the same corner in nature, we can't treat it the same way, depending on the speed that we're going into and the exit that we're about to come out of the corner. Okay, so now we're on the part of the racetrack called an S-Bend. So it starts behind us and it wiggles its way around to that side of the racetrack. Where drivers can get sucked in is they don't actually follow the S around like the bend. They use it like a Z, they turn, they go straight in between the middle part of the racetrack and they close the entry to the second part of the turn. Very, very common mistake that we see on S bends is they don't open up the turns. In this instance, the first left hand corner is a very fast and flowing sweeping type corner, but it leads into a lot sharper hairpin type corner. But as the two of them, that's an S-bend. So it's a slower in and a faster out is the maximum that you can get on this corner. Okay, so a bad example on an S-bend corner is running straight in between the two turns. A good example is they're following the S-bend around. They're gonna open up the second part of the corner. We see so many newcomers just thinking about the corner that they're on and not the following sequence of turns. A tight entry here means a tighter corner, less speed coming out of the turns. A very, very common mistake for newcomers is like I said, going from point to point and not thinking ahead one corner in advance. So in this instance, our driver's not utilizing the full width of the racetrack. The reason behind that is we don't have enough speed around the corners. By accelerating earlier, that constant speed's gonna flow us out towards the edge of the racetrack. A tighter corner, a tighter circumference, equals less speed. Okay, so here we are on a double apex corner. We've got one apex point down below us, and our second apex point is gonna be a little bit further around the corner. Typically, you clip the apex point on one corner, let the cart flow out like we are right now, and then you get to a second apex point. These corners should be treated as one continuous turn rather than turning straight and turning again. We want to try and limit the amount of steering inputs through this part of the track. This corner is also going up a hill, so a lot more speed can be taken than if the corner was a lot flatter around. Now when drivers are starting out, they start to hold the corners too tight on the double apex. The tighter circumference means less speed is taken through this part of the track. So clip one apex point, flow out and clip your second apex point, which is gonna be around this part here. So in this shot we just saw, our driver is holding it too tight of the racing line. Now, why might that be? There's not enough speed taken through an uphill section of the racetrack. So with limited speed through this part of the track and he's, him turning a corner, he's holding a tighter line. With more speed, even in the same steering lock, he'll be able to flow out more towards the highest grip on the racetrack. The second and third corner, where I was waving you on, 
much earlier on the gas now. That's why you're faster, okay? That's the tightest corner on the racetrack, so it's the most important corner. So by accelerating earlier, that's what's flowing the card out now. But you've got to do that on every corner. You can't just pick and choose which corners you're going to get on the gas early. It's the same principle on the other corners on the racetrack, okay? But another one second faster, that's good. We've gone at least four seconds faster today, so really good. Just remember each corner is going to be the same. Gassing it earlier, flowing out of the turns, okay? So as we can see now, our driver's going about two to three seconds faster. Just by accelerating it earlier, you can see his car's now flowing out to the edge of the track. More speed, more RPM, faster lap times. Okay, so here we are on a sweeping corner. These are typically the fastest corners on a racetrack. With these corners, confidence is key. We can see here there's a lot less radius around the corner. So a lot less steering put is required on this part of the track. But also, they need to be taken differently depending on which way you're going on the racetrack. As we can see behind us, when we're coming from this direction over our shoulder, we're gonna be treating this corner a lot faster on entry. As you go in the turn, it drops away. So the chances are you're gonna have a lot more oversteer than what you are in the opposite direction. So it's really important when you go down the back straight, start to look up. Okay, there's three corners coming up that are up a hill, okay? So if you want a lift, that's fine, but have a lift for like one second max, and then back on the gas, okay? Remember, flat out onto the straight. Past the sign, you can go flat out, no problems at all. As long as you're smooth and using all the racetrack, no problems at all. So those are the types of corners that you're likely to experience on a racing track. Just remember, not all corners are the same. Depending on if you're going clockwise or counterclockwise, you're gonna be able to travel at different speeds for different corners. I hope these tips give you an advantage the next time you're at the racetrack.